Um, so let's see, a couple of things. So the Open Source Leadership Summit was great. It was really good to see everybody. And uh, just, it was great to see us, see everybody there. Um, so we made some good progress. I still have to do the minutes from the um, uh, board meeting on Friday. So I just haven't done those. So that's on my agenda to do this week. Um, I think the biggest takeaway from it for me was that we made really good headway. Maybe not headway, we made decisions on, on how to do versioning. Um, and so I'll just, I'll, it'll be in the minutes and we can maybe talk about it week when I kind of kind of spell it all out. So we put, we put closure to that issue. Yay. <laughs> so thanks everybody for doing that. That was, that was a big win. Yes. <laughs> no doubt about it. Um, and then I don't know if there are any other real big takeaways from the, from the board meeting, Ben or Sean or Georg. No problem, Daniel. I mean, I think we, we did a, we made the decisions about disseminating things. I think there's good progress um, from the working groups. Diversity and inclusion really did, a, I think, an exceptional job this last year. I think uh, risk is emerging very nicely. Growth, maturity, and decline could, I think, uh, has an opportunity now to move more quickly. So and I think overall, things it was good. good discussion. Yep, agreed. Uh, Lord, anything on your one, one thing that's not so much a decision that came out of the governing board meeting, but something that we started is a community handbook with the goal to document how chaos operates and what the roles and responsibilities are within the project to make it easier for someone joining the project and also to um, to just have some consistency with how we operate. So we just started the project and it's in the governance repository. My, this is what's on my agenda for this week is to think about the structure that we want for this and to start populating. And I'll continue sending emails to the main list and inviting people to add to it. Mary, right, cool. And I think Brian had expressed interest. Brian Prophet had expressed interest in working with you. Um, and then I guess maybe the only other thing that came up at the board meeting is we officially updated the charter for the project to just really reflect the work that we're doing here. No changes that really need to be expressed out. It doesn't change the way we work. Um, so it was really just to accommodate things like working groups, which weren't in the original charter. So. Um, on that note, uh, in the charter is the DCO, the Developer Certificate of Origin. And so I had Matt Snell, who's a student here, kind of take a look at, uh, I think Ben, had you posted the GitHub repo? It wasn't Ray for a, a DCO bot. Oh, uh, that, that wasn't me. Okay, it must have been Ray. Um, so basically it's just a checker to see if there's a signed offline um, the, the bot works fine, but it, it doesn't put the line in there for you. So basically the bot, you know, if it'll basically just check if there's a signed offline and if there is not, it'll kind of, you know, flag it and not allow the merge to occur. So in theory or reality, we're supposed to be doing DCOs on everything under the chaos project. So I guess we have a couple options here. One is to change the ch charter so that we don't have to do them, but I don't think that will go over very well. Um, and then the other is just start requiring DCOs that people either have to, um, you can automatically do it from the command line, but if you're working in the GitHub interface, you're just gonna have to manually put it in there. And those are really, I think those are really our only options. There's not too many choices in this case. Any thoughts on this from people? I mean, At the student organization here that we have on campus, we thought about just taking this as a nice project to add a browser, to create a browser plugin for Firefox or Chrome that will add the signed off by line to the GitHub interface commits. That's just an idea you've been toying with. Okay. 
John, did you have a comment? No. <laughs> you did, but now it's gone. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, you know, I think the bots that Ray proposed, that's what we do. And we just live with the limitations. Okay. Yeah. You understand the bots will only check if there's a signed offline. That's right. All. They don't yeah, put and I think, I think that awareness is more than we have now. Okay. The, um, I think then it just requires us to ask people for that. Um, okay. As a matter of practice. And I don't know if we're most concerned about the working groups um, repos or, I mean, obviously with the, the working groups, we have uh, more new things that are developing and it might be easier to change practice there. I think the contributors for the mm -hmm. software are, there's a lot. And uh, mm -hmm. so I'm not quite sure what we do there. Um, Daniel, did you have thoughts on this just with the Grimoire Lab stuff? Because it's such a extensive code base. Hmm. Um, so the usual way is to have some kind of, so we are asking people to have some kind of CLA, right? Or it's not exactly the same. Mm -hmm. oh. I think we lost. We don't have a CLA yeah. or a DCO okay. at the moment. Okay. but. We what what we are discussing right now is to have something similar, or at least to sign somehow the con yeah, each of the contributions, right? Yes. yes. So basically, each contribution would just have a line that says "signed off by Matt German Prey." That's it. A single line. Yeah. Not much to add. There is one more thing to add. Yeah. The, so even if we don't have a CLA, but we want the people, we want the people to 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 have some sign up. The problem is what you said basically about having the GitHub in, uh, interface, and even more about what do you think about the markdowns and so on. How have you thought about this? I, 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 technically, so the, I'll go ahead, Georg. Yeah, the sign off is just the comment on each commit, and it mm -hmm. can be easily generated if you use your local tools because you, in mm -hmm. git yep. commit you just add a dash s and it creates the signed off comment within the commit so as a software developer who works locally i think this is a no brainer you just have to remember to do the dash s every exactly. time um, the concern that we have is the someone who uses the GitHub interface because they would have to spell it out every time. But I think Brian had the genius idea last time that we just add a template for Git commits and have a signed by line and then they just have to enter their name. I mean, theoretically, it's not much overhead. <laughs> it is, it's about 30 characters, you know, 20 characters, so. Yeah, but the other, um, okay, I, I'm a bit afraid of people that are not that technical, so they have to feel new things and say, hey, what's this? But on the other hand, if we ask people about having a CLA, then this is the first time they do this, then it's done. Mm -hmm. and then we can, we can store this somewhere, no? No, it's not a CLA. So uh, this is a DCO, so for every commit that comes in, even from you, you would have to sign off on every commit. Yeah, but so the question is, can we have this through a CLA, so a previous CLA, so we don't have to ask anyone to keep feeling no way? Okay. I don't think so. <laughs> I wish I wish the answer was yes, but I think the I'm fairly certain the answer is no. Yeah. They was looking for another way to not have people feeling this once and again, but that was. Yep, I don't think that's the way. <laughs> okay. Again, I, I wish. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, did, this, did, didn't really, the, this didn't really cause too much of a problem when they implemented it in the overt project, which is where I got the idea. You know, I think for the, like the first week or so, there was some grumbling about having to use the form the way we spelled it out. Okay. But it, it was really minimal friction. Right on. So why don't, I, I think we just have to start moving forward on this. That's kind of my take. I don't yeah. think... We're, gonna, we're not going to be able to change the charter. I don't think the folks at the LF are going to agree to this one. Yeah. <laughs> they might no, no. Some things like working groups, but 
I don't think we can remove the DCO. So um, in that regard, why don't I, um, Sean, maybe I could start with the GMD working group. We could just start there. Sure. Um, okay with you? Yeah, that's fine with me. I mean, I think we're just going to kind of have to roll this out a little bit at a time. Yeah, at a time, yeah, we can pilot it. So we just, um, anytime there's a new commit, we ask for that. Yep, and we can we can install this bot in just to make sure that the signed offs are there so that no commits will occur if there's no signed off line. Yeah, yeah, okay. I think we do that. And then, um, yeah, and I, I think maybe this okay. practical matter, we put a template in. So, yep, yep, the overt template. I think, yep. Brian, I think, Brian, you had shared that prior. I mean, I think we could just include it in the repository as a market yeah. level. If you need it again, I can go grab it. Oh, well, I bet there's, if you could, unless I find it on my first attempt here. Uh, I didn't find it on my first, first attempt. attempt. Oh. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> I tried so hard. I typed one thing. I know. Yes, because typing one thing always finds things on the internet. <laughs> That's how it works. Yes, I give up. Wow, you must have better internet where you are. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so maybe we start 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 it with GMD. Maybe Leor, you could bring it up with DNI on Monday of next week. Yes, I will. Okay. Cool. Thank you. All right. Uh, well, I, I consider that kind of done. Um, let's see. Any other? I know, I know we all just kind of caught up, but any other things on people's mind right now? Those are my big issues. Again, this isn't like class. We don't have to go for a whole hour. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Oh, I just did find the DCO GitHub UI browser extension. Oh, okay. Yeah, that would be nice too if you could do that. I mean, that wouldn't be a a terrible thing. Yeah. Georg also told me that apparently there's an open issue to GitHub about adding this option in the web interface, and then apparently the issue is like three years old. So yeah. they're not they're not doing it at least not right now. Yeah, I mean, imagine they're trying to reduce friction for projects and that they would view that as more friction. Mm -hmm. um, okay. I, I did want to bring up, well, no, I'll wait till next time. <laughs> well, it was going to be the conversation we had. I don't know how many of you are familiar with this, the new fellowship, the CDF. It's Talk about the, the, the new US delivery. You know this one? Yeah, I, I look at that. So they had, um, so the CD Foundation, if you take a look, I mean, basically it's continuous delivery. And if you take a look at, I think they have a couple projects, four projects mm -hmm. with Jenkins being the kind of the most famous one out of that group. Um, but there was some ex, uh, some expressed interest from one individual that we talked to from the CD Foundation to think about how metrics could be um, part of the CD process and so how during different phases of the um, CI process we could think about metrics as a way to I, kind of identify. Uh, you get the idea. To identify different things along the process. Yep. So it was just, it was really, really preliminary discussions. But I guess I'll bring it up now. I think it's something that maybe Daniel, you guys with Baturgia and Grimoire Lab might want to keep on your radar. And Sean, obviously, mm -hmm. with Augur, want to keep on your radar that it's a slightly different way of thinking about um, delivering metrics that is less about kind of a, a cross section at a community, and I don't mean like a, how about this, like a time series of a community. It's less about that and thinking about how they can be integrated more in the CI process. I think, I think there are two different ways of looking at it. Mm -hmm. I think one of the questions also 
what needs to happen to the continuous delivery tools to produce the metrics that we are interested in. Yeah, I think so too. I think this is a very long, long arc here, a long game, but it was really the first time I thought about it. So I thought that was a fairly interesting discussion that came out of the OSLS. Um, I also think that out of the, the workshop, um, we had met with folks from Hyperledger and that seemed to be moving along pretty well from my take. I mean, none of these things are gonna be super fast, but they had expressed interest and still continue to express interest. I don't know if anybody has comments on that. As an update for those who were not at the meeting, the Hyperledger project has the Indie project, which is a distributed identity management system. And the, the interest here is to build into the system diversity and inclusion um, metrics so that people can manage their information and give access to certain people uh, to get aggregate metrics across their community. So let's say the Linux Foundation were to use the Indie project for their single sign-on system, then everyone contributing to Hyperledger would have an account, would put in their demographic information, and then can say, the Linux Foundation is allowed to pull metrics that includes my information. And the nice thing about integrating it into the Indie project is that if uh, any other projects start using the system, they get DNI metrics out of the box. And I think it's also um, potentially lowers, um, lowers the barrier or lowers the bar for for trying to understand this type of information, that it doesn't have to be survey, survey by survey, in this case for LF projects, as I'm having to understand it, which is cool. Is that right? Yes. Okay. Um, I only, I think the trick is, is that, at least in my mind, is that there's unique IDs for every individual, from, from you explaining it to me, Georg, <laughs> and that, as people move out of LF related projects, their unique IDs might change. And so it doesn't necessarily translate out of the, the Linux Foundation world of brokered projects. And if we were gonna look at, if groups say in Apache or Eclipse were to look at it, they'd have to find other ways to, to provide these unique IDs, is that correct? Um, so they would use the if LF ID. If they use the LF ID and the Indie that is built on the Indie project, maybe hopefully in the future, then they would be able to get the metrics. If the and other projects say at the Apache Software Foundation wanted to use the LF ID. Yes, but okay. they can create Apache IDs. Sure and run it on the indie tool mm -hmm. and then they get the metrics. But if I, was a, if I was a person working on Apache projects and had an Apache ID, that would be essentially one profile that I would have to maintain. And if I had a Linux Foundation ID, that would potentially be a separate profile that I would have to maintain. The IDs don't translate between each other. I don't know. Okay. I'm sure they don't, yeah. I would insist, but yeah. <clears throat> so there's no there's no single universal ID in this open source world, outside of asking people for their social security numbers, yeah. <laughs> their passport numbers. Not a good idea. No, I'm pretty sure that it's not going to happen. So, um, so I do think there's some limitations to this approach, but I think it's better than than what is currently on the docket. Yeah, the interesting part is implementing it into a software for the first time. Mm -hmm. um, okay. This has been deployed anywhere, the Indie project? It, I don't think it has been used anywhere yet. Okay. Well, maybe we're the first. Maybe. Okay. There is, there is a use case by some gov local government in Canada. Okay. That's using this? Yeah, okay. Okay. All right. All right. 
Um, all right, cool. And then Georg, do you, when you did the DNI session, the panel session on Thursday, were there any projects that, that kind of spoke up about expressing an interest in working with the DNI group? I had seen a bunch of people kind of come up at the end, but I wasn't part of those conversations. Um, no, I don't have a list of new projects that wanted okay. to join. The okay. big question is what is required of projects that want to pilot DNI metrics? Okay. And we started a conversation about this on the DNI mailing list. Okay. I actually, I liked, yeah, for those of you that aren't on that mailing list, there's basically a, I don't know, small, medium, and large kind of approach that Emma put forward that I liked a lot. It would say that perhaps, you know, one of the metrics is where you want to start in terms of understanding DNI within your community, small. There might be a, a slightly larger way of thinking about it, which would be two or three of the metrics, and then you get the idea, slightly getting larger and larger. So I thought that was a pretty cool idea. Um, okay, cool. And, okay, I honestly think that's the end of my updates. I did the CD foundation thing, which led to the Hyperledger thing, <laughs> which led to, so any other um, thoughts from people? Again, I think we're kind of getting back from the OSLS. Um, from my perspective, I think Sean dropped off, but uh, Risk had a really nice discussion. I know Jessica, you're still on. I don't know where you're at at the moment. Yeah, I'm, I'm still on. <laughs> okay, <laughs> so uh, it was really nice to sit down and talk with Jessica and Sean about stuff related to risk. Do you wanna give an update of that, Jessica? Yeah, so I know, um, I think we've been talking on the larger group and then on the specific risk calls about how to start developing metrics that are a little bit more security focused or um, in certain cases procurement focused. Like if you have contracting officers who are trying to instruct their, um, their people who are doing, going out and doing purchases, like thou shalt only purchase things that can be provably secure or reliable, safe, uh, whatever the case may be. So we, we finally managed to come up with um, I think it's five, I think we're at five, five focus areas. Um, I'm hearing this from memory, so apologies. I think it's security, transparency, code quality. Um, we have something that's activity right now. I think that's gonna transition into being more along the lines of business risk, um, since we obviously don't want to reinvent the wheel of what GMD has already been working on. But the, the basic idea um, from what we've been discussing is to develop metrics that split into two main thrusts so that you have um, ways for developers to judge the quality of the, the components that they're choosing at uh, development time. And then you have an ability for, for folks on the opposite end, like those contracting officers or uh, C-suite executives, whatever, to be able to make um, informed decisions and informed policies about what kind of software packages and other things like that uh, should be acceptable within products that they're developing themselves or products that they are acquiring. Uh, oh, licensing was the other one. Um, so I think now that we have the, the focus areas, uh, which has obviously allowed us to set up the goals, we're gonna start waterfalling um, the metrics underneath them and just really start to, I guess, knuckle down and, and try and get that stuff built out. Yeah, transparency was the fifth. I know, but, okay, excellent. <laughs> you got licensing, you got four, and <laughs> transparency was the <laughs> I was close. <laughs> so I think um, from what I understood, your plan was to kind of shop these five areas and then start pushing them out more broadly to the community. So kind of get a structure and then start pushing them out. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I had to admit this to, to Sean and I can admit it to the larger group. I'm not actually that familiar with GitHub. So I need to set up an account so that I can start um, actually making a branch and putting all this, the, the risk metrics and things, the focus areas up on GitHub. Um, and then once we do that and have, I think we've started identifying certain metrics that already exist or, or metrics that we wish we had for those different focus areas. Uh, we'll probably spend the next couple of weeks building that out. And then I know from my end um, with my various healthcare and medical device contacts, um, already have a few specific use cases where I think we're, I at least, and I assume Matt, I will also be asking for your help and for Sean's, um, of sort of pulling out specific metrics that might be able to answer um, some of the specific use cases that I'm either aware of or will hopefully uh, 
receive from experts in that sector as I talk to them. Right on. Yeah, happy to help. I think this is going to be the first case between working groups where we have a metric that might potentially live in two working groups. So when you had mentioned activity, this is, I think we just need to, I think it's great, um, but I think the work that DNI is doing, I don't think there's any metrics in DNI at the moment that necessarily live in GMD as well. So I think they're pretty much independent. So I think this will just be the first case where we have some that may live in risk and live in GMD, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So I think we'll just have to kind of play that out too, which will be interesting. That'll be good. Yeah. Okay, cool. Right on. Thank you. Anything else from you? From risk specifically? Yep. I don't think so. Okay, right on. Um, and then I guess one other thing, there's there's uh, potential for value. So this was the fourth and final, fourth, fourth and final, and that's it. As soon as we do this, we're done. Um, the fourth and final um, area of interest, so obviously GMD, DNI, risk is getting a lot of great attention right now. Um, and value was always kind of the fourth that was kind of out there. Um, and Georg and I had a conversation um, that, that may indicate some, some work in that area. So more to come. Um, so I think that'd be a really nice way of rounding out all of these initial things that we had talked about maybe a year ago or a year and a half ago um, to kind of give them all, all attention, which is great. Um, cool. I don't think there's anyone on common, on the common end. So um, we'll just table that one until next time. All right, um, this is great. Any any other comments from the folk? common working group is meeting this week. Thursday. Thursday. Everyone on the main list should have gotten an invite. I saw it. Don sent it out. Uh, all right. Well, if everybody's good, I know Daniel has to roll. Any other comments from folks? All right, tomorrow's GMD call. And as Georg pointed out, comment, and then we will see you all next week, I'm guessing. Yeah. See you. Thank you. <laughs> it's good to see everybody in California, by the way, again. So yeah. mm -hmm. see you all later. Have a good day. Bye-bye.